Welcome everyone to episode 60 of 55 and 5. Ian Riccoboni, Carrie Silken, AJ from Basan Creative, web design behind the camera. Carrie, after today, we're officially rolling down the other side of the mountain that is 121 cards of Parker's trading cards. Well, it's been a fun ride, and I hope you have someone today to take us out with uh, at least someone I might know. I think you will. The hint on Wednesday, if you remember, was that we had two folks with the same last name that were portrayed as brothers that weren't necessarily brothers. And uh, if you remember yesterday, it was the great Don Lee, six foot four. And uh, in Canada, he teamed with this man. So we're gonna put five minutes on the clock, standing in at six feet, nine inches tall, at a lean and cut 292 pounds. This man, not a bodybuilder, but one of the most physically in shape and physically opposing men you'll ever see, kind of a prototypical Undertaker style build. Kerry, what do you know about the great Sky High Lee? I just, I just know his name, and I, I don't, I don't think he wrestled much past the, uh, certainly not past the sixties. Right, not past the sixties. He lived from twenty-one to seventy-four, uh, and there's a reason you might not have heard of him in the sixties. By then, he was wrestling in Germany, France, England, and okay. he settled down in England. So this is not a Tex McKenzie kind of guy who couldn't uh, wrestle where the, <laughs> where the tinkers darn. Right. <laughs> no. Sky High Lee generally considered the tallest wrestler of his generation. I mean, if he was really 6'9", mm -hmm. or if he was 6'7", right. that was huge. Gigantic. Yeah, and he actually had uh, what's called uh, acromegaly. Or oh, is that what Andre had? Right. When you have too much growth hormone in your body, your pituitary gland continues to manufacture growth hormone beyond when you need it. And so um, that's why he was as large as he was. A uh, couple of signatures. He was uh, really known for being one of the big time rule breakers. He was kind of feared. Uh, one of the first men to portray a cowboy on the in the TV era of wrestling. Uh, he was known for his Stetson hat and his mutton chops. He always had mutton chops. Um, even before they become fashionable in the 60s. Maybe that's where Ron Fuller fashioned himself. At. Right. I mean, could be. Could be. And uh, so, yeah, he had the mutton chops, 44 to 68, uh, length of his career. His biggest highlights come in Alberta and Saskatchewan. Um, you know, does very well out there. Goes to L.A. in 57. Uh, interesting match in 58. A rare U.S. appearance for Ricky Dozen. Okay. Draws big money in the headline match against Ricky Dozen in Hawaii in 58. So he's in San Francisco in 59. From 61 to 64, like we mentioned, Germany, France, and England. Settles in England. Um, wins just about every match in England. He is a top, you know, he he's portrayed as this ultimate winner. Very tough to beat. Only people that really beat him in England are Ricky Starr, uh, who we mentioned from 50s WWF Capital, and uh, Billy Robinson. And Bill, yeah, very few people beat Billy Robinson. Right. So I mean, if you're if you're at that level, he was a top attraction uh, while he was in Europe. Um, he would do kind of carnival stunts. We've talked on last stop Penn Station. We've talked about kind of the freak shows, things like that. He did quote unquote geek shows where he would chew glass and he would have people throw darts at his back. Really? Yeah. Wow, I like right. that. Right. So, uh, and also on Last Stop Penn Station, we've talked about mysterious deaths. His is questioned by many. Okay. Dies in 1964. There's been three associated causes. Uh, the acromegaly, and I'm, I'm probably not saying that right, so I apologize, uh, which is the growth hormone condition, which contributed to some of Andre's problems toward the end. Um, his love of alcohol. He would wake up and drink whiskey. Uh, he was a world famous drinker like Andre as well. But the third suspected poisoning by an angry restauranteur with rat poison. Maybe he didn't pay the bill. Uh, right? I mean, here's a guy who's a kind of a foreign national living in England. Uh, it could have been any number of those things. So to this so day, what was he like? Fifty when he died? Yeah, he was. Uh, he was fifty-three. Very interesting. Yeah, Sky High Lee though, one of the great early giants of wrestling. He seems like a guy you'd want to bring to New York. You would think you would have heard about this this mysterious death. Mm -hmm. uh, 
you know, just through wrestling legend and, you know, all these historians, it's like people seem to be in more interested in older stuff right now than the current product. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this is the kind of story that would, you know, you think might come out. You know, remember when Colt Cabana had that brief series where it was kind of wrestling mysteries? He, he did a premium podcast where he did. I can't say I remember. He it. did about 10 minute episodes. This would have been perfect for that to investigate the mystery of the death of Sky High Lee. We got a couple of mysteries. We got Ken Colley. Yes. And who killed who killed Sky High Lee or what killed Sky High Lee? So we'll keep those on the back burner. Maybe we'll do a series after 55 and 5. I bet you one of our uh, historians is going to come in with some info. I hope so. This is uh, this is where we need your help. Maybe that nice man that shares the posters from the UK. Maybe you all know. Oh, yeah. The, uh, it, OST. Right. He's from New Zealand. No, okay. no, you're right. Mm-hmm. Well, he does both. He, yeah, does, he does the UK stuff and the stuff for New Zealand, Australia, that OST guy. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, please chip in. But we're at 60. Thank you, Ian. Yeah. I... I didn't know that we'd make it this far. I'm having a lot of fun though. We still got Buddy Rogers. I keep it's like the sword of Damocles. You know it's you know it's out there, so he has to show up eventually. <laughs> and uh, we got Luthez. We got a couple of great. We got we got the Sharp Brothers. We got a lot of little got the little people too. Yes. Yeah, I got our, our, our little our little guys. Which I know Bushwhacker Luke has already preloaded you with some great information. Absolutely. Because <laughs> uh, uh, Canada. You know, the uh, French Quebec and Toronto was just for some reason was the uh, short people capital of the world. And we mentioned it with Kasabowski, the Kasabowski episode where he would promote in Ottawa. He was noted for having all all tiny people cards. So there, there you go. And so Luke, Luke, we know I'm getting so excited. I'm knocking over the furniture. Luke, as we know, wrestled a lot with those individuals. So including Sky Lolo. Interesting to note. We mentioned on the Don Lee episode. Sky Low Low, named in tribute to Sky High Lee. Yeah, we'll have some good stories about those guys. <laughs> they were wild. Can't wait. We know Little Beaver is right around the corner. And, <laughs> and, and so is episode 61. So if you're watching us, thank you for watching us every night, 8 p.m. till we get through all 121 cards. 55and5.com is the place to be. Thanks to AJ, our producer. For Carrie, I'm Ian Riccoboni. Thanks for watching. Happy wrestling, everybody. 